Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating a health system as well as a shield that will prevent the player from being damaged. As you can see, a scene is already set up here, but the only thing in this scene that is scripted that we won't be creating in this video is the horizontal movement. If you need a tutorial on that, I'll link the video in the description below. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. To go ahead and begin, we'll create our shield script. All this script is going to be doing is saying whenever the player presses the left shift key, go ahead and activate the shield, and whenever they press it again, deactivate the shield. And this shield will prevent our player from being damaged. So to begin this script, we're going to have two different variables. We're going to have one public and one private. We'll begin with our public variable, which will be a game object. And this is the object that we'll put as a child to our player. The next variable that we'll create is a private bool called active shield. And we'll be using this variable inside our health class to make sure that we don't take damage when our shield is active and that we do take damage when the shield isn't active. So inside our start function, we'll go ahead and set our active shield to false and our shield game object to set active false. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and go to our update, and inside our update, what we're going to do is check if the input of the left shift has been clicked, and then we'll set our shield active or deactive based off the state that it's already in. And the way we'll do this is we'll check if our active shield bool is false. And if it is, then we'll go ahead and set our shield to be active in the scene. And if it's not, then we'll set our shield to be deactive in the scene. We also want to make sure that we're switching our active shield boolean that we have to the opposite of what it currently is, so that way our health system will know whether to take damage or not. And then our else case is just going to be the opposite of what we put above. And now we're going to do the final thing, which will actually be a git set for our active shield. And the reason we want to use a git set is we want the value to be private within our class, but we want to be able to publicly access this variable. So we do that through a getter setter. So we'll go ahead and create our public bool active shield. And then inside it, we'll put a git which will just return our active shield. And then we'll do our set, which will just set our active shield to the value. And that's the entirety of our shield class, so all we're doing is switching our shield to be active or deactive based on the player input. So now we'll go ahead and go and create our health class. And we'll open this up. And this class will have four variables. It'll have two public ones and two private ones. The public ones will relate to our UI that we'll create later, so we'll go ahead and start with those. The first one's going to be a public image called health image. And we need to make sure that we include our using of unity engine.ui. And 
and then the next one will be a game object called game over. This will just be a text that will be displayed in the middle of the screen whenever our health is less than or equal to zero. And then we'll create our two private variables. The first one is going to be a, of our shield class. And we'll just name it shield. And then our next one will be a private float that we'll name health. So now we'll move on to our start function. Inside our start function, we want to set our health to one. The reason we want it to be one is that the fill amount component of an image goes from zero to one, and we're going to use our health to set that fill amount. So we'll go ahead and set the base fill amount. So we'll do our health image dot fill amount equals our health. And this will set the fill amount to one, which will mean the fill amount will be full. Then we'll go ahead and take our game over game object and make sure that's false by default. And then finally, we'll go ahead and get our shield component. And the reason that we consider shield to equal the git component of shield is that I'm going to attach both the shield script and the health script onto the same game object, which will be our character. Now we'll go ahead and create a take damage function. We can actually remove our update function as we won't need it in this class. And then we're going to create a void take damage that takes in a parameter of float called amount. And the reason that I'm taking a parameter of amount for our take damage function is because I want the amount that the health goes down to change depending on the tag that the player interacts with. So to do this, we'll just do health minus equals amount. And then we'll go ahead and update our fill amount for our health image, which will just be health image dot fill amount equals health. Now that we've done that, we can move on to our onTrigger function. Because my game is in 2D, I'm going to put onTrigger in our 2D. But if you're in a 3D game, just simply leave that part off. The first thing I'm going to do inside our onTrigger inner function is check if our shield is active. If it's not active, we can take damage, otherwise ignore. So if our shield isn't active, then we want to be checking for the tags that will cause us damage. Our first tag is going to be spike, so we'll do if other.tag equals spike. Then we want to take a damage of 0.1, which is equivalent to 10% of our health. And then we want to check for our other tag, because I'll have two objects in this that will damage us, and our other tag is going to be flame. So we'll go ahead and do else if other.tag equals flame. Then I want to take a damage of 0.5f, which will be half of our health. Now we want to create a simple if statement that checks if we're out of health. So all we'll do is say if our health is less than or equal to zero, then we want to end the game. And the way that we'll display that our game is over is by setting time.timescale to zero. As well as displaying our game over game object, which will just be a text that says game over.
And that's the entirety of our health script. So now we can go ahead and go to the scene. And the first thing we're gonna do with that is go ahead and create our canvas that will display our health as well as our game over text. So we'll go ahead and create a canvas. And inside our canvas, we're gonna create an image. And I'm simply gonna name this health image. And we'll go ahead and give it the image of the heart. I'm also gonna go ahead and create an outline for our health as this will make it easier to see how much fill amount is gone and how much is there. And then I'll go ahead and set this in the corner and just have its position be about 75 and negative 75 in the Y. Now we need to make sure that our image type is correct for using our fill amount. So we'll go down to our image. We'll switch it to filled. And then we'll switch the fill method to vertical. Now if I move the value, you can see in the top corner that the heart's fill amount goes up and down. Now we'll go ahead and create a shield for our player. So we'll go to art and drag in our shield base. And we'll set the Y of this to negative three. And then we're going to set the layer to three. This is just in front of our player as our player is on layer two. And now we'll add a flame and a spike into our scene. For the spike, I'm going to set it to a 0.3 in the X and a 0.4 in the Y for scale. And then I'll rotate it around the Z by 270 degrees. And then I'll move it five in the X and negative 3.5 in the Y. Now we'll go ahead and do similar things for our flame. I'm going to set its Z rotation to 90 and then its scale to 0.5 in both X and the Y. And then finally, I'll move it to negative five in the X and negative 2.7 in the Y. Now I need to create tags for these so that way our code knows when we're interacting with them. So we'll go ahead and add a tag. And we'll call them the same thing that we named them in the script. So flame and spike. Now we'll go ahead and give the correct tags to the correct objects. And then we'll select both of them and give them colliders. And then we'll individually fit the collider for the image. And then we also need to make sure that both of these objects are triggers. And now finally we can go to our character and attach the script and then fill in the corresponding variables. So we'll go ahead and attach our shield script. And then we'll attach our health script. And then for the shield script, we want to drag in our shield game object as its variable. 
And then for our health script, we want to drag in the health image that's the colored heart, as this is the fill amount portion. And then we also need to create a text inside our canvas for our game over. And we'll make this 500 in width, 300 in height, 100 in the font size, and then we'll just center it. So it'll just be in the middle of the screen. Now we can go back to our character and drag this text into our game over. That's everything for the scene, so now we can go ahead and play and test. So as you can see, if I press shift, the shield appears. If I click it again, it goes back away. If I run into the objects with my shield on, no damage is taken. If I turn my shield off and then run into the objects, you can see that for the spike, it does a tenth of a damage. And for the flames, it does half of my damage. And then if I die, it says game over. So again, we created a health system that takes damage from specific triggers, in this case the flame and the spike, but it also has a shield that can ignore those triggers whenever the player has the shield turned on. So thank you so much for watching, I hope this video helped, don't forget to like and subscribe, see you next time.